In our previous tutorial, we used Maven to create a Java application, and we also used it to compile, build, and uh, package that application. The advantage of using Maven is that um, Maven does a lot of things behind the scenes. We don't have to configure each and every step. Uh, I believe we just ran two to three commands and uh, we were able to achieve all these actions, which is creating the source code directories, configuring the dependencies, compiling and packaging. Even though Maven does all these things automatically for us, it helps to understand what's happening behind the scenes so that we can better control it. So we'll have a look at uh, some of the things that Maven has done for us in our uh, short example in a previous tutorial. We'll try to understand what's happening behind the scenes. So the first thing that Maven did for us was to create the project source code template. So we didn't have to create each and every directory. We didn't have to create, create the whole package structure and the source code. Maven automatically created the whole template. It also created a simple class for us. The second thing that Maven helped us do was to actually build and package the application. So we were able to compile and uh, package the code into a jar file. So in this tutorial, we'll look at the first, first point here, which is creating the whole source code uh, structure. And we'll see how Maven does that. So the first step of the process was to run the Maven archetype colon generate command. So the output of this step was that we had the folder structure and pom.xml on our hard disk. So this was downloaded from the Maven repository, depending on the inputs that we provided. So what are the inputs that we actually provided for the Maven archetype colon generate? So the first, the first input that we provided was the archetype. This is information to Maven as to what is the kind of project that we need. You remember Maven came up with a huge list of archetypes. So each archetype corresponds to a particular type of application that you want to develop. There are there are archetypes for uh, Java EE applications. There are archetypes for, uh, say, a Spring application, a Hibernate application. So all these archetypes are available in the main Maven repository. And uh, each archetype is a good starting point for the type of application that you want to build. If you want to build a simple Java web application, you would use the web application archetype and uh, you would take it from there. Once we had chosen the archetype, the next set of inputs that Maven expects from us is the group ID and the artifact ID. These two identify what is the output that we are generating. Say our project generates a jar file. Now we need to give a group ID and an artifact ID for that jar file. So the artifact here is the output of our project. If it's, an, if it's a web application, it would be a war. If it's an enterprise application, it's an EAR. And uh, in our case, it was a simple Java application, so it was a jar file. So this lets us know what is the name of the artifact that is the output of our project. And the group ID is an explanatory ID that we give to group all these artifacts. Say I have a big project to, uh, you know, I'm actually having five to six artifacts that's output. So all those artifacts would come under a common group ID umbrella. Now, what about the version? The version had a default of 1.0 snapshot. So 1.0 makes sense because we're creating a new application, but snapshot is used when you wanna have a piece of code that's still in development, it's not yet released. Now, once you would uh, complete the development and have a major release, that's when you would actually mark it as a release. So this is something that you, have, you can use as best practice when you're uh, releasing the code but for now, snapshot should do when we are actually developing. So the final output is package. Package is uh, the name of the package where we needed to uh, place our source code. Uh, when we chose the archetype, it was a simple Java application and there was just one Java class. So this package is actually information to Maven as to what package that class should belong to. Now, depending on the input that we provide over here, the Java class in that archetype will be assigned to this package. So what's the impact of our inputs here? When we choose the archetype, we're actually deciding what is the project structure. This will control the layout of the files, the folder structure, and the dependencies that are required. Now the group ID, artifact ID, the version, and the package will all affect what the pom.xml contains. Now all these information, whatever we add over here, will be entered in an XML called as pom.xml. Let's have a look at what pom.xml does. 
So here's a pom.xml of our example that we created in the previous tutorial. Let's look at this section. We have the group ID, artifact ID, and the version number. So these three are the key for any particular artifact. If you have an artifact and then you want to publish it to a repository, Maven can identify any artifact by using a combination of these three keys. We also have a packaging tag here, which tells Maven what is the actual output, whether it's a jar or a war or a EAR. In our case, it's a jar. And this is again dependent on the archetype that we have chosen. If we had chosen an archetype for a web application, this would probably be a war. The name is the name of our application, and this is how it would be identified. Uh, properties tells uh, Maven that the source code encoding is UTF-8. Now have a look at the dependencies tag. The dependencies will have a list of all the dependencies that this project has. Now, in this case, dependency is only with JUnit. Now, how do you specify the dependency? You again use a combination of group ID artifact ID and version. So say for example, JUnit releases a new version. So the version number would change to say 3.8.2. The group ID would be the same and the artifact ID would be the same. And uh, if you change the version number, you'd be referring to the newer version. So Maven uses these three, a combination of these three to identify a particular artifact in the repository. Now, if you want to use a different artifact under the group J unit, you would change the artifact ID here and you would choose the right version number. So it's like a, it's kind of like a tree. This is the highest level, the group ID, which has a whole lot of artifacts inside it. And you can choose the right artifact by mentioning the artifact ID here and the version of that artifact here. Now what does scope do? Scope is something that tells Maven when to use this artifact. We're, going not, we're not going to look at this now because this is something that's used by Maven when we are uh, building and packaging the application. Okay, so now that we understand how Maven uses the group ID, artifact ID, and version to pull up an artifact from the repository, now this should make sense. Our group ID, artifact ID, and version number should be in such a way that other applications can consume our artifact if we choose to release this and save it in a repository. Now, this is applicable for other reasons as well. Say you do not plan to uh, publish this in uh, you know the online repository. This is something that you're gonna use for internal consumption. Maven actually has an internal repository. It has a repository on your desktop itself. Now, whenever you actually build and uh, package any uh, artifact, it's gonna install the artifact into the local repository. Now, say I'm using a different web application, I'm coding a different web application, which uses this jar that I have created over here. All I need to do is, in the palm of that application, I need to add a dependency saying, the group ID is this, the artifact ID is this, and the version is this. So what Maven will do is, it'll first look at the local repository and see if, if there is an artifact like this available. And if it's available, it's gonna pull up from the local repository. And if it's not available, it's gonna go to the online repository. So to summarize, these are the uh, information available in pom.xml. We have the Maven coordinates, or the identifier of an artifact, which includes the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version. We have metadata about the project. We'll know what the project is and what the version is. And uh, we have the build information, which says whether uh, the project is a jar or a war or an EAR. And we have all the resources and dependencies that are required to successfully build the project, which comes under the dependencies tag.